Hey guys, and welcome back to act number four with a tie tie killer with this full racing guide and analysis and kind of interview and actually basically he's just teaching me how to do it properly okay i'm bad <laughs> he's good he will teach us how to do it properly and we are now at act four and we're gonna start right away the timer is currently at 51 minutes and we are hitting the aqueducts yeah so this is uh the second to last zone where you'll fix your experience well this and dried lake There's lots of uh nice packs here and there um, and you'll see me farm a little bit extra in Dried Lake, just so I can correct my XP. At the end of Dried Lake, you want to be a level 30 and some change. That way you can uh, get some nice XP breakpoints. This is because um, when, I, when I talk about um, what XP you require, or like why I get that level, it's so that um, it makes... Uh, essentially, the way that XP works is if you're too low level for a zone, you'll get penalized for it. And if you're too high level for a zone, you'll also get penalized for it. So you can't be a level 3 in a level 70 zone, and you can't be a level 70 in a level 3 zone. It doesn't make sense. So you want to be around the same level as the zone. You want hey, to be you skip three the bird. The zone. Yeah, we skip the bird because we don't have to kill it. Aww. It's one of the unique monsters. It's like the, the Brutus in Mac 3. <laughs> but it's the lore. You have to do it. Some designer will be mad at you for skipping everything. They are designing, hey, we can't make a big-ass bird. He just skips it. <laughs> Yeah, talking with the uh, GGG members at um, XLCon, they were like, yeah, we we like what you do with our game, but we don't like how, uh, how, you, skip how you, everything. you make it look like a joke. Yeah, yeah okay, okay, I can but understand. I think, I think it's uh, part of the reason why they're they're buffing the bosses, because, I mean, you, you saw Brutus, you saw Marvel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not that challenging for racers. But not but... every player is playing on your level when it comes to yep. that with like pre-stacking everything and, and as i said even with my leveling gear and stuff i'll do half of your dps <laughs> right so if they if they kind of buff the bosses to make it even harder uh it's like unfair it's going to get better for you because then you have like you need like two seconds instead of one second but everybody else will take <laughs> like two minutes instead of one minute right but yeah that's why i think uh the nerfs or the the buffs to bosses only really uh they only really affect them um, People who aren't speedrunners, which is the majority of players, mm -hmm. right? So, but now you're basically that's what you said uh, about just leveling because you could already leave the zone here. Um, mm -hmm. Any particular reason why you didn't pick up the crafting recipes? Like useless on this part, or um, the attack and cast food recipe just isn't too useful for me. If you want to pick it up, you can pick it up in Act Nine, right next to the waypoint in uh, the desert area, where right before uh, Shakira, Shakira, the uh, scorpion. And uh, here, I go ahead and ID the boots. Even though the boots are my colors, um, I opt to uh, to not use them because they don't have MS on them. Mm. I mean, I think about using them and I go, nope, I'd rather have the movement speed. Um, I can't quite make use out of the four link until I get to X6. And I uh, go ahead and uh, complete that uh, the quest that gives you all the skill points in the game. Talking again about experience, is there like a, a rule that you apply that you say like, okay, uh, if the zone is, let's say, level 30, what level do you have to be minimum and what would be the maximum to not get any penalty? Like plus, minus four levels, five levels? What is the the rule of thumb, basically? So the rule that I was um, explaining earlier is that you have to be three levels for, below the zone. And then for every 16 levels, this difference can increase by one. So in a level 30 zone, for example, you'd want to be four levels under. So you'd want to be level 26. Um, but this kind of... It's not. It's kind of like a rule of thumb in that it doesn't always apply because um, you would think about it like, um, how would I say? Um, sometimes the zone, like uh, you'll see, mines level uh, two is gonna is a level thirty five zone. Crystal veins is a level thirty six zone, and so if you can't meet that level thirty six requirement, then you're in a little bit of trouble. Mm -hmm. And this is basically um, where you would go to the waypoint, check basically what level I am, what level is the zone, mm -hmm. and if it's if I'm like too low, I go back to Dried Lake, reset the zone, and grind up the experience. Or would you take mm -hmm. the uh, aqueducts here? Uh, or, I would go Dried Lake. Dried Lake for the um, mob density, right? This is yeah. It's one of the reasons why I say you want to be level thirty point five or whatever by the end of Dried Lake, is so that you don't have to come back. Mm -hmm. Same with Docks. You want to be like level twenty five in some change, so you don't have to go back. You want to be level 39 in some change in uh, 
Chamber of Innocence, so you don't have to go back. You basically always keep track on your current level, and mm -hmm. if you say, like, wait, I could use some more experience, you're just going to kill, like, a couple more packs and then still move on. Because backtracking yep. is basically the worst thing. If you find out I'm too low, I have to go back, you're just wasting way more time than just realizing when you were at Dried Lake, wait, I'm, I'm too short, let's just kill a, a couple more packs here, right? Mm -hmm. So, and... the good old lab, dude. The worst places that I ever seen in this entire game, and I do, I hate it, dude. I, <laughs> let's see how you would... approach the lab here. So again, um, we go to lab at level what? 31. You can see that my what? icicle mines, which is level 12 gem leveled up, and my pyroclast mines, oh. which is level 38 gem leveled up. Um, this means that I'm going to do quite a bit more damage on Azaro, and I'll be a bit safer because of it. Um, here, you in lab, you try to get three keys. So if you um, every the first two fights of Azaro have a uh, the first two fights of Azaro have a special mechanic on it. So here, you can see that I have lieutenants. If you leave all the lieutenants alive, you'll get an extra key for doing so. Uh, not a lot of people know that, and so by having three keys at the end of the lab, uh, you're able to get a lot more items. Okay, didn't know that either. But yeah, as you said, like you wrote it in the chat here, perfect experience timing. So right before you basically turn in, you leveled up your gems and you have like the mm -hmm. badass burst here. Just one shotting. Yep. So you're currently, since I, I missed that, like you're exactly level 31 now, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, once you're level 32, again, the rule, remember, uh, you can be three levels this, behind the zone level. And then for every 16 levels, this will increase by one. So that way, when we're level 32, uh, we can be in a level 37 zone. Mm -hmm. Whereas um, if we're level 31, we can only be in a level 35 zone. This is why this is another reason why we do lab here. A triple key, baby. <laughs> yeah, I was super excited, and you'll see uh, you'll see why at the end. You just get a nice little loot explosion, like we're a lab farmer. Depending on your yeah, loot filter. <laughs> Yeah, I, I usually the use the, the never sync on uber plus strict whatever, so oh, no. I really never pick up anything because I, I think picking up stuff, but it's something different, you know, like solo cell phone, you really pick mm -hmm. up a lot of stuff and I I, I realized that uh, myself once I started playing solo cell phone hardcore, you pick up, up everything because you're basically building your so next good. character in your stash, pretty much, that's mm -hmm. what I experienced. Yeah, that's somewhat of it. Um, I say that people should always treat uh, the leak start like it's SSF, just because you never know when trade API is going to go down, like it has for the past few leagues, I believe. Um, when I was pushing 100 uh, with Havoc and the boys, uh, trade API was down for like quite a long time, and it was like, hey, we can't sell any items, dude, we can't buy anything. It's like, all right, we just stick to our practice. You know, remember when we were playing SSF, we just stick to that. Mm -hmm. Well, sometimes, as you say, like, or it's like behind a half an hour. So I see that all the time when I get whispered, hey, I want to buy this gem. And I'm like, wait a sec, I sold it like an hour ago. So when, yep. if it's not down, but so super laggy that you have like, can literally scroll down on the trade and then be like, okay, this might be an accurate. This may be not sold already. So it's mm -hmm. a little bit of a curse here. And I hope they're going to fix that on soon. Hopefully. Um, here, before you step on any of the fire things in normal lab, if you have 75 fire res, you can actually walk over it, provided that you have a level 24 life flask, and you'll be perfectly fine. Um, I always ID boxes in lab, because if it's freeze explode and you die at the very end part of lab, you just lost like 5 minutes. I mean, if you're playing hardcore, you would lose your character, so you would always ID boxes. You lose a little bit more, yeah. Mm -hmm. But even people in softcore, they should always ID the, uh, the boxes, you know, the rare strong boxes that they find. Here you can see that um, lab's a little bit scary. We've got all the mechanics up, but we're just gonna just run through it. A little bit of inventory management. Basically still wondering if you should use the falling in the boots. Yeah. We're not able to, to make the, okay. the most use out of it, so I just opt to use the movement speed instead. I'd rather be fast. And it's not like we need the damage at the moment anyways, so. So I didn't see anything particularly else. What? Uh, on pieces of gear, especially, we're looking for life and resistances, and if we can get an open suffix, that would be lovely, so we can craft on that last resistance on there. Uh, at one point you said you, you're you like currently, like, or usually picking up every single rare item that you find. Mm -hmm. uh, this doesn't apply here, just to save time, is it too much loot, or do you just right. check the bases? 
Um, at this point, you're looking more for gear upgrades, whereas in Acts 1 and 2, and sometimes 3, you need the alterations so you can buy gems from Act 2 Yina. You need the transmutes so you can buy things from uh, Act 1 Nessa. Um, and these are your, like, these are your, your Chaos Orbs and your Exalted Orbs of uh, early game. Here, um, because I didn't get the skill point in uh, Mines 2, I placed it on a portal for it, and I should have come back and done it later. Oh <coughs> yeah, the, the weird boss with his hammers flying around. Yep. Yeah, the Hammerdin. The Hammerdin, yeah, I call it also the Hammerdin. But basically, you, you can... Actually, you can skip that boss, right? You just have to yeah, click on the soul and, and just... And leave it, yep, basically. you'll see me click on Destro's soul and just skip right past him. And normally, you wouldn't log out, you'd finish the zone, but we had a we had a weird layout where, like, it was super far away. Makes sense there, yeah. Um, ideally, you would get this skill point before lap, because it would have let me uh, get that life node, uh, the one we were talking about. Mm -hmm. uh, in Act 3, the Blood Siphon node. Okay, any reason? It's like random if you take the Reso first or Aeon, right? Um, we do the Reso first, so that we can uh, we can run through this zone, take the waypoint to the Comb Zone, and then we can run through the entire Comb Zone. Um, that way we're able to make sure that XP is good, um, and we're not going to have any issues, because the Reso is a level 37 zone, and... Uh, like, the very first zones are 37, and the next zones are 38. This Wait. is a little stick. Yeah, we did it on the first one as well. Um, if you smoke mine or flame dash into the uh, the boxes, you can actually not proc the event, and then you can skip past. Wait, what? <laughs> Legit that works? Holy. Yeah, we did it at the, the start of the zone, too. Yeah, I remember, but I was like, well, what are you doing here? But we were just talking about G something, and now I saw it again. Like, you can actually skip that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would only recommend skipping it if you're already like level 32 at this point. Uh, just because the little encounter gives a nice amount of XP. I mean, now it makes perfectly sense when the GGG members, the staff is saying, I don't like what you do with our game because you're skipping. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually insane. But as you said, you're now doing... Okay, this is the, the part that I was missing. You're doing the first part of the Reso, then you do the mm -hmm. full part of Chaos. So you do both first parts to gain the experience to level up so you have that level when you are approaching the second part of each zone to kill the boss. Mm -hmm. Also, you'll be a little bit stronger because you'll probably have uh, more XP um, since we're able to get more passive points and everything, you know? So we'll be uh, we'll, we'll be able to take down the bosses uh, safer. Also, Duresso is a bit of a scary boss. Yeah, yeah, it's scarier definitely. than, uh, than Comb just because there's so many things that can go wrong there. You know, if you don't have good cold res, then... Uh, that's a, a good time to craft, like right before fighting Dresso. Whereas Comb isn't isn't really that scary as long as you stay in the correct side of the arena. When we approach the Comb fight, uh, you'll notice that one part or one part of the area, like a third of the arena, has like uh, little uh, orbs, like I don't remember magma orbs, I believe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, fly out, and then uh, the other two thirds are safe until he gets to about half health. Mm -hmm. Here I'm looking for the other skip, and you can see that you can actually go up this waterfall. Save so much time, it's hilarious. Yeah, the, the very first skip is uh, the one that matters more, though. Mm -hmm. The one I was trying for earlier. Well, I'm definitely gonna pick up Smoke Man. You can do so much weird stuff with it, because I'm... The more buttons, the less I'm interested in it. It's just my playstyle. I like one-button <laughs> characters that do everything, right? So... And that's why I'm always like, mines is like, ah, oh, you need to place the mines, you need to like, trigger them, it's like two buttons, oh my god, like, give me something else, you know? But actually, you have so much opportunities and possibilities to play around with a smoke mine, with like, mm -hmm. skipping entire things. Yep. And I mean, smoke mine might get nerfed in the future, but I think it's unlikely, just because, um, I think GG kind of likes stuff like this, where it's like, oh, look at these, um, players, look at what they can do, you know, we don't want to take that away from them. Unless it's like, you know... Or are they no just going to adjust this zone more or less than... I don't know. It could also be... Mm, yeah, that could, that could happen. I mean, in X7, uh, like you were talking earlier, yeah, the exactly, uh, canvas yeah. since you skip got removed. And you can see, fire cost mine putting in work. Here, if you need to clean out your inventory after killing a boss, you'll log out and talk to the vendor, because it puts you closer to the vendor. Mm -hmm. But if you don't, you portal out, because it puts you closer to the waypoint rather than the vendor. Yeah, I think this is all stuff that comes with the practice where you're actually thinking about stuff like that. Like, <laughs> yep. insane. It's... But yeah, the, the pyroclast mines do a, a shit ton of work and these uh, ice cycle mines as well. It's, it's, 
Yeah, it's just Trapper, you know? It's like, shit tons yeah. of damage and... It's actually, you're just basically one-shot. Okay. They're not even moving away from their spawning point in Solo Salfon. As I said, I just always compare it to my personal runs. I do level up like at least 30 characters every single league. So I do run through that shit like all the time. And uh, yeah, still, even with my level gear, I'm slower. And this is just impressive for me. So this is a tricky one. This is actually, this. this the swords are the worst shit ever. Yeah. Or if he stabs you. Yeah, the swords are what can get you because they can stun block you and, you know, then he like dashes to you and you're stuck on a sword, dude, and you're dead. But um, you just need to make sure that you're aware of where you're at, where the swords are at. Um, can a sword spawn on top of me? Just RNG, you know, uh, and just be safe. Um, if you have really high cold risk, like capped cold risk, you can be pretty safe. So you just ignore it. Let me go back here. Isn't he like usually once he's done with his face? Isn't he like randomly like always dashing towards you or is there a trick? Do you have to be certain closer to him that he's like not dashing? Because I I, uh, I would like, if I would do this now with the miner, I would basically put the traps on my point because I know that he will dash to me anyways. He doesn't always dash. So what I tend to do here is I will uh, throw the mines and then on top of him and then I'll flame dash on top of him uh, so that the, the dash doesn't fully go through and then I'll usually smoke mine away because smoke mine if you don't know has a little smoke cloud around it mm. which blinds the enemy um it doesn't matter as much on savage here but it's you're actually safer the closer you are to mobs because uh you blind nearby enemies yeah which is like reducing their accuracy and that, uh, like mm -hmm. that kind of stuff like a dramatic amount so mm. you take less hits and that's why you'll see me uh flame dash like into monsters a lot so that I can blind them here, uh, Belly of the Beast, you ideally want to have uh, bleed removal, but it's fine if you don't. You just play through the layout a little bit slower than usual. <clears throat> almost, like it's yeah. the second time where you'll just almost get one-shotted. Yeah, this is where um, having Blood Drinker would help a lot. I realized, like around now, I was like, oh, I don't have life nodes. Well, you're close to like softcore viable. Now you're 600 life, so that's actually not too much, I guess. Or is it like somewhere where you say like, do you actually pay attention to your life, or are you just like, whatever items I find, this is going to be my final HP. I don't care if I have 1500 or 2k life. Is there some uh, sort of rule of thumb that you fall like, okay, in Act Three at the end, I should have around this amount of life or energy shield or hybrid or something like that? Uh, the only thing that I really look for is, uh, 2400 effective life, uh, by the time you kill Act 10 Gataba. That's enough for tier 1 maps, you can just stick in tier 1 maps if you're in Trade League, or, you know, just farm up gear, farm up currency, buy what you need in those early tiers, just transmute the maps, no need to run anything super difficult, and, uh, yeah, 21 life will be pretty, pretty alright in 90% of cases, assuming that you're stacking defensive layers, you know using like custom damage taken steel skin or like curses uh just really anything uh you know you can give it's or take stack, some stacking up the, the uh, layers of defense basically mm -hmm. you know es that kind of thing you mm -hmm. can see that i go hybrid much later on and uh after the act 10 kill i go ahead and do a zero at the three and a half hour mark ah oh, so that's a bonus the yep. bonus the spoiler bonus here I think it's it's I it's still even if I see it now for the like tenth or fifteenth time when you're like one shotting bosses, it's actually every time I see it I'm like holy shit that dude has some deep, and it's actually solo cell phone you know it's not, not like any fancy stuff where you see like ah, expensive leveling gear or something it's actually, mm -hmm. and now you complain about adding invisible MTX, are you that kind of player yeah. that is not enjoying MTX? Uh no no no, no. I want um an MTX for pirate class mines that's invisible because when all the balls fly out it's like 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 watch the fight like you'll see me flame dash and you can see all the this clutter on screen mm. I want like one where like all the the clutter is gone it's just invisible but on the other hand do you like MTX yeah I mean I like some of it I guess because uh, you know that uh, MTX is actually buffing your DPS uh, it's true you gotta equip it but I mean, I choose uh, not to equip it until I get to uh, to maps. It's the uh, the racer strat because uh, once your character feels good, that's when you can equip MTX because your character is a, a god at that point. 
You well, don't want to be a... It's still a couple of seconds that it takes, which, where you can, like, kill stuff. <laughs> I suppose, but, uh, you know, if, uh, if you're running around with some, some white piece of gear, or some, you know... You can still look magic like set. good, you know? Although you're not I guess good. So. It's like the but same with me in real life. Yeah, yeah I, I feel you there. <laughs> I mean, I'm walking around in, in pajamas, feeling like I'm a uh, king of the world. Okay, next a beautiful fight here. So here again, we're gonna just pre-trap. We're just gonna detonate. Boop, there he goes. Get ready for piety. Detonate again. Careful with the one-shot mechanic. Although, I, th uh, yeah, I think it doesn't really one-shot you in Act 4, right? It does uh, a hell of damage. Slam? Yeah, so most of his attacks do um, just different uh, like elemental damages. I TP out here for mana. And he's still like in the middle of his phase. Like if you get hit by like a very large attack, like maybe a slam or or that ability, um, you might be in trouble. But the general concept for almost all these bosses is just gonna flame dash away from any attack that they're doing and just move around the arena while also trying to maximize our DPS output. So here, uh, he's already at two thirds HP. So we get ready for the heart, take down the heart, take down Malachi, and we prep the next heart. Hope he's not like like he's doing now, dashing away or doing some sort of that, so you can trigger the mines, kill the heart, get him into the next phase. So just pre-stack the mines again on the second heart, third heart, and just it's like impressive how fast that fight went. Like yeah, really cool. um, when he when he goes down, he'll actually teleport to your location. So if you stand on top of the heart, he'll just be right, on, right where he's already was. Okay, you picked up oh, yeah. now the stone golem and chain support. Like just. To get the uh, quest done, or do we actually uh, use that? We just hold on to chain and offhand. I don't end up using it, but uh, chain is a less damage multiplier. Uh, so you can see that it says thirty percent less damage with mm -hmm. hits. Um, and so I just level that in offhand. If like super later on, I want to use a six link with chain on icicle mine. Sure, I can do that. But um, in this run, we won't be using chain it's just to level it up. There's no other gem that's really useful here. And I pick up Stone Jolem, which I don't end up using until like at 10, I think. But mm. ideally, you want to use it as soon as possible. Yeah, uh, if you, if could you use... have the sockets, uh, still a red gem. Mm -hmm. So if, yeah, you, I, if I you happen to find a new piece of gear, gear, okay. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Perfect. That we are currently on one hour, 11 minutes, and on the way to Act 5. Just for me, I would be personally be Val over Soul at one hour, I think, on League Start. Mm. So I still have room to improve, which is good. I mean, we all want to improve. That's why we're going to watch these kind of replays and VODs and having some mentor. But it feels like for me, um, watching this VOD with a racer, with a pro racer, it feels like that I just made my driving license and somebody like Alonso <laughs> from the Formula One is teaching me how to drive now. Like this is, this is for me the comparison. And I personally, I feel like a, a big noob as if I would have played the first league and I'm absolutely green and I have no idea what the hell I'm doing. This is how I feel uh, on like watching him play. And this is some kind of joy I have to admit. I, I really, really like it. So guys, thanks for tuning in and see you in part five.